Hello guys, I am your host tonight, Zero Morph of the Final Nights series. I am the lead developer, uh, in case you have not watched all the other episodes. Uh, tonight is episode 8, and I'm very excited to uh, show you guys a couple uh, different things. Uh, I made some new posters uh, in the uh, downtown LA area. Um, I also uh, had skinned uh, three signs. Uh, I believe, what was it? The uh, the diner in Santa Monica, Arthur Killed Patrick's, and the old smoke shop sign. Uh, I made these about 10 years ago, uh, long before I really knew much about uh, Photoshop. And um, the signs, you know, honestly, I kind of thought they looked a little clean. So I went ahead and dirtified them. I made them all dirty and gritty and they fit a lot better into uh, the dirty, dark, grungy look of Santa Monica. Those uh, signs are no longer clean. So I want to show those to you guys as well. Uh, however, before I show those to you guys, I would like to talk to you about uh, something that's been on my mind now for the past uh, several days. Uh, I've been putting a lot of thought into it, and that is the uh, Dr. Malcolm refilling his blood uh, issue that I've been running into. So as I've been playing as Lucian Blackwell over the past several weeks, uh, I have found that uh, obtaining blood is just too freaking easy. Um, until you get to LA and Dr. Malcolm leaves and the blue blood with the uh, broken down car also leaves. Um, and when they leave, they leave permanently. They're gone for the rest of the game. But before that time, when you're in Santa Monica, uh, man, you could just go in to the medical clinic, get six blue blood points for Malcolm, walk out, walk back in and just keep doing that six points every time now with the uh with the blue blood with the broken down car you at least have to have a seduction of four in order to get him to fill up so essentially if you have a seduction of four you have ultimate blood in santa monica as long as you're in the San santa monica map now again as soon as you graduate to uh downtown LA, they're going to leave and they're no longer available. But for that time being, I really feel like Dr. Malcolm is a bit of a cheat. Um, I don't like it. I want uh, the final nights. My vision has always been to make the final nights a vampire survival game where it's difficult. It's challenging. It should be hard. It's not meant for people who uh, are new to the Bloodlines game, I highly recommend those people play the unofficial patches um, and then maybe even graduate up to Clan Quest mod, play that. And, 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 and really the final nights are for two kinds of people. One, uh, the people that are tired of the unofficial patches or Clan Quest mod or the companion mod, you know, those who have the original clans and they're looking for a change, a change in clans, a change in uh, different systems. And uh, TFN is also catered towards survivalists, people who love to try to survive in a game. You know, think uh, post-apocalyptic America, the Fallout series, for instance, or uh, someone who's ever played Skyrim, the uh, Requiem mod. That is um, an excellent mod, by the way. Um, I highly recommend it if, if, if you're ever playing Skyrim. Um, if you're into a survival kind of game. I love survival games. And that is, is essentially at the core root of what The Final Nights is all about. And I don't want to stray from that vision. I never want to stray from that vision. And the way Dr. Malcolm right now is set up really strays from that uh, vision. And so I was talking about it in episode seven, and I wanted you guys to post your thoughts and your feelings about that. And I got some really, really good feedback that I just briefly want to talk about. Um, one uh, one poster, one one commenter, uh, I believe is a guy, and, and, and if I'm wrong on the pronoun, I apologize, but uh, his name is Amir, and he posted a really, really good post, a very sincere 
well-written, well-thought-out post. And I just want to read it to you guys real quick uh, because I was, I was, I put a lot of time and thought into Amir's post. And so, so I want to read it to you so that we're all on the same page. Okay. Um, he said, regarding the Malcolm thing, and just the mod overall, I really like your enthusiasm as it's infectious, but I think you're too concerned with balance. Uh, playing with the other clans and min-maxing sounds fun, but I don't feel like thinking about every step from feeding to leveling up is fun at all. Now, don't misunderstand me. I very much appreciate the love you put into your work, but I think the difficulties of being a kindred are better portrayed through storytelling than the gameplay itself. Now, I might be alone on this, but Vampire has always been about the story and the catharsis for me. See, he used the word catharsis. I mean, who, who says the word catharsis? This this guy, Amir, is clearly a very intelligent person. He um, says, uh, the catharsis for me, rather than worrying about the stats of my character. Okay, so again, I'm very thankful for your work, but I think reflecting on your approach to the game won't hurt. And I agree. I completely agree with Amir. You know, it's always good to take a step back at your project um, and, and really analyze and get public feedback and say, what do you guys want? You know, what, what you, because, because, you know, I'll just be honest here. When I modded the final night, I had other people playing it in mind. This wasn't designed just for me. I have a vision, but at the same time, I want other people to have fun with it too. You know, so that was, you know, that's why I've been modding, uh, Bloodline since 2009. You know, I started out with the Camarilla edition and after I kind of felt like I exhausted the Camarilla edition in 2010, I began the Final Nights project, which is based on Camarilla edition 1.2 and the changes that I made in that. So, um, yeah, uh, here, let's, uh, he had a little bit more to say. Uh, it's the story of a fledgling thrown face first to the foes of being a kindred, after all. And I think the gameplay should reflect that rather than presenting obstacles insurmountable unless you have munch in some way okay so i really appreciate that compliment and 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 amir i'm just going to tell you you're not alone on this okay you're not the only one who feels this way um i got another comment that i thought was worthy of note from new wave masquerade uh she says that uh, she kind of takes the opposite approach of amir and basically says i think it's a great idea I think it's awesome. He says, uh, yeah, I agree with you having uh, Dr. Malcolm always there as a permanent blood fountain, as she calls it, a blood fountain, which is, that's exactly what he is, uh, is a bit of a cheat. Uh, and that takes away from the whole purpose of feeding. I completely agree with New Wave on that. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> now she does warn me uh, that I'm sure there's gonna be plenty of zero morph, how dare you, sir? you take away our precious Dr. Malcolm blood fountain. And, and that is something I really want to avoid. I don't want to upset the TFN community. I want to give everybody uh, something. I want this to be a republic, not a democracy where the majority wins everything and the minority gets nothing. I don't, I don't want that in the final nights. I want everyone to get a little bit of something, but how do you balance that? Okay, so so as as I scroll down here, I look at JT Corpse left a, a a fantastic message and an idea. He said, "How about we make coercion, seduction, or persuasion an option to get the blood from Dr. Malcolm?" Now, the only issue with that is that uh, coercion is not designed to be able to give you blood. Okay, at least not from sucking from somebody. So coercion is out in that. Now persuasion is kind of the same thing as coercion. Persuasion is getting someone to allow you to do something, but I don't think you're going to find a lot of people who are going to willingly give you their blood if you persuade them enough. No matter how persuasive you are, you know what I mean. Try try to convince someone. Let just let me put my fangs in your neck. I don't think you're going to get a good response from most people, especially uh, a doctor while he's working. Okay. So um, I, 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 I appreciate JT Corpse's ideas. He's, he's brainstorming and that's awesome, but I don't think coercion and persuasion is the right answer here. Um, seduction is the right answer. However, you already have a blue blood standing outside with a broken down car where you need a seduction of four 
to uh, seduce him so that you can feed from him. If we do that with Malcolm, it's redundant. Okay, so now you have two that do the exact same thing. You know what I'm saying? So, so to me, that doesn't really make sense to allow you to feed off of Malcolm. I mean, essentially, we're taking Malcolm away. You know, we're 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 essentially making him a one and done. Um, yeah. So, so I don't think any of those are the option here. Uh, Shadow Flash also wrote a uh, um, a comment that uh, he 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 kind of takes the middle road shadow flash he says i wouldn't want you to make him a one and done however i do agree he's a bit of a cheat exactly that's the conundrum is how do we find the balance for dr malcolm you know because i understand people don't want him to be a one and done but at the same time he's too much of a cheat so how do we find that balance okay so cd player as uh him or her probably a guy i would say by the name player a lot of girls aren't all about playa. So I'm going to say CD Playa is a guy. He says here, he says, um, what if we had some sort of a counter that was based on time? So enough time goes by and and then you can feed on Malcolm again. Now, CD Playa is on to a very, very fantastic idea. In fact, his comment is the one that got me to end up with the solution that I ultimately came up with, which I'm going to tell you guys about. Here's what I've done, okay? I don't like the extremes of either side. I don't want him to be a blood fountain, and I don't want to completely take him away where you can only feed on him once, and then that's it. So here's what I've done. I created a Python script. It's a very small, uh, very in-evasive or invasive it's 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 a very small script and what it does is it sets up a blood counter for malcolm okay it checks every time you walk into the medical clinic it checks to see how much blood malcolm has now by default he has six blood points if when you enter the medical clinic if he has less than six blood points then it it, it 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 adds a one to the blood counter. When that blood counter reaches two, then he gets a blood point back. And then it resets back to zero. If Malcolm already has six blood points and he's full, then nothing happens, okay? So essentially, every time you enter the medical clinic twice, Dr. Malcolm replenishes a blood point. Now, I did it this way because then Dr. Malcolm is regenerating his blood, but he's doing it slowly over time. And it's not really based on time, it's more based on how many times you enter. But I figure if a person is going to exploit this and just walk in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out of the medical clinic, why not just open the council and type in blood 15 and just replenish your entire blood pool? Why not just do that? It's a lot faster than going in and out, in and out. That just seems silly. So I don't think people are going to exploit this uh, because it doesn't make any sense to when there's a 10 times faster way to replenish your blood. Just cheat. Just open the council and cheat. It's so much easier. Okay, so I really hope you guys like this as a solution. Um, I think it really um, still keeps the original, the final night's vision that I had, but at the same time, uh, doesn't, doesn't go so far as to say, okay, Malcolm is a one and done and that's it. And again, it's not really going to matter once the character gets to Los Angeles, Malcolm leaves permanently for the rest of the game anyways. So I don't think this is a big change, but, uh, at the same time, I think it does, uh, restore the original vision that I had for the final nights and it's you know it, it should feel like you're a vampire who's trying to survive awesome okay so uh let me go ahead and show you guys the new posters all of the band posters are done they're finally finished they're updated with the bands that are in the game let's go to downtown la and let me show you Okay, guys, we are here in downtown LA, and as you can see before me, and, and, and this is really frustrating because this is the only part of the game I know where this poster exists, but it's really, really dark. I don't even know if you guys can see it. 
or not. Uh, it's behind this Nine Inch Nails poster, but this is a new Godsmack poster um, that's half, <laughs> like a quarter of it is being covered by this Nine Inch Nails poster, but it does say uh, the last round, Friday, October something, $5 cover charge. Godsmack is coming to the last round. Uh, that's the bar that they play in. Um, and it's got a picture of a vampiric Grim Reaper because the song used by Godsmack is a song called Vampires. I don't know if you guys ever knew that or not, but um, yeah, the song is Vampires. That's what plays in the last round and Godsmack is on his way. Um, I, I, I'm sure this poster exists other places in the game. I just can't find them, but this used to be the old Mr. Monster poster. Um, and now it is this new Godsmack poster. So I hope you guys like it. Again, it's hard to see. Um, I think it's other places in the game, so don't worry about it. But as you can see, it looks nitty gritty. It looks awesome. Um, it's got duct tape on it. And I think it's really cool. So let me show you guys the other poster. Okay, guys. So uh, this one should be a little easier to see. It's a little bit brighter in here. But this is a poster. Uh, this used to be... Uh, what was it? Uh, dang, I can't remember the band I replaced, but it was a poster for a band coming to the asylum. Uh, it looks like uh, kidney thieves are heading to the asylum. It's a $5 cover charge. You have a background, a picture of the Mona Lisa that looks just creepy, man. She's like bleeding from the eyes, like black blood in from the mouth. It's really hard to see, but it says Friday, October 13th. Friday the 13th, doors open at 8 o'clock p.m. Uh, so yeah, this is the, uh, a new Kidney Thieves poster. I hope you guys like it. It looks nitty gritty. I think it really fits in nicely uh, with these uh, collection of other posters. So um, let's head back to Santa Monica. I want to show you guys the new gross uh, disgusting signs that I made for some of the businesses. All right, guys. So we are in, uh, Santa Monica. Uh, this is the A and B Kilpatrick's bail bond sign. Uh, I skinned this about 10 years ago, so this is nothing new. However, I don't know if you guys can see or not, but the sign looks very worn. It looks gross. It looks gritty. And I think it fits in a lot better. Um, now these signs are not in HD because I didn't even know how to make HD textures uh, way back in the day, but uh, I do now and I should probably update those. But for now, I just real quickly, I just wanted to make these nitty and gritty. Um, let's go ahead and head over to the Sunrise Diner, which also has a new nitty gritty sign. And I don't know if you guys can see this. It's actually a little bit easier to see from this side. But can you guys see the Sunrise Diner sign? How it looks worn now and it looks gross and nasty and um, still has that reflection, but uh, it doesn't look so brand new. Uh, the signs looked brand new before and I didn't like it like that. Uh, so I'm just trying to keep some uh, consistency in there. Um, so in the last sign I want to show you guys is the Old Town Smoke Shop. This also has been Santa Monica-fied, I guess I'll say. Uh, it looks gritty and gross now. It fits in a lot better, I think. I think it looks really good. So, all right. Uh, so every poster has been reskinned in HD um, with a band that's in this game, and I'm so excited about that. Uh, let's go ahead and head back and continue. I think it's the warehouse mission with Lucy and Blackwell. All right, guys, so here we are back at, uh, what is this, uh, the Asylum, and we just uh, got done screwing up, <laughs> screwing up the, uh, the whole sister quest for more experience. Doesn't look like I'll be getting more experience, which is a little bit of a shame. It's okay. I don't mind. Hope you don't mind either. Ow, this dude just ran into me. I don't think he realizes who I am. <laughs> this is Lucy Blackwell, man. Uh, let's see here. If you're just uh, getting started with us, uh, you really need to watch the other seven <laughs> episodes. But, um, wow, these guys are loud. They're like really loud walking people. Uh, but, uh, yes, uh, let's take a look at our stats real quick, uh, before we go see Bertram. So I'm sitting on eight 
uh, experience points. And um, we're about to end Santa Monica, uh, which is fine, which is good. Uh, we'll be getting to Los Angeles here soon, which means the uh, Blue Blood with the broken down car. He has no name. His name is Blue Blood. His first name is Blue. His last name is Blood. So we'll, we'll just call him Mr. Blood. Uh, Mr. Blood and uh, Dr. Malcolm are going to be leaving Santa Monica permanently for the rest of the game forever. Um, in fact, when you guys uh, install uh, TFN 1.6, they won't even be in your game because they left in my game. <laughs> I'm totally kidding, of course. But um, let's see here. So what, what I'm saving up for, okay is presence level three passion so what passion is going to do is it's going to increase my radius uh of people who stand around me who i affect in combat which is great obviously uh it lasts 60 seconds instead of 40 which is obviously amazing now the mesmer uh the mesmerize the mes mesmerization is that is that how you say it? i don't know how to say it in fact i don't even speak english english is my eighth language <laughs> okay i'm kidding it's my first that's rough because <laughs> i can't say this word <laughs> um but victims have a 20 percent chance to become mesmerized in combat so what they do is they fall down to their knees like they're worshiping me <laughs> which always feels good you know that's always that's always nice when people fall to their knees before you especially when you're like in a fight with them <laughs> um because then then i can punch them on the top of their head it's much easier um well there's a 20 percent chance of that happening as opposed to a 10 percent chance with entrancement so these are all great things, but the real reason why I want level three presence is because uh, at level three presence, your vampire begins to use presence all the time. It's always on. It's like it, it, it becomes a second nature for them, which I think would be really cool if fortitude became second nature, but that'll never happen. I'm sorry. But with presence, it does. Uh, so whenever you're talking to somebody, you will try to use your presence on them because it's innate for you. You don't even have to think about it. And that gives you a plus one to coercion and seduction, which is, I mean, obviously awesome. So instead of sinking more points into manipulation and intimidation, which I eventually will because I need this to be a level three or a level eight. Uh, but oh, and I actually have enough to put in there now. Cool. Uh, but no. I want presence three, so that'll put my coercion at six. Now, uh, other kindred, other vampires who are more powerful than you, which at this point in the game is everybody, um, even the Thin Bloods down at the beach. Copper was actually more powerful than me. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. He wasn't. Uh, but yeah, so kindred will try to resist your presence. In fact, in some kindred societies, if a if like a prince believes that you are using presence to manipulate his emotions or her emotions, uh, they'll like downright cut your head off. <laughs> That's like considered, you know, using a uh, a discipline against a prince, which is not allowed. Look who finally made it! And that is one I ugly dude right there. <laughs> it's the eyes. It's his eyes, man. Those eyes are just gorgeous. They're so high resolution. You knew I was looking for you? I've gotten good at knowing when I'm wanted. But hot dang, he's ugly. Um, and his teeth look really cool, too. I'm not sure why. Okay, I do, because I reskinned them. Uh, you're Bertram Tongue. The one and only. Yeah. But don't bother with the introductions, fledgling. You know who I am. Oh, you do? News travels down the kindred grapevine like wildfire. Really? Well, that's great. So you know I survived, then. Oh, you did, did you? See, I don't, <laughs> I don't like the way he says that. You did, did you? It's like, uh, okay. I need to get to that warehouse for Mercurio. Oh, never mind. The warehouse, huh? though. Oh, I've okay. Been watching the place. The Sabbat has a bunch of low-life. Bunch of low-life humans. Um, just humans? As far as I can tell. 
The humans seem to know the score from the way they've been talking. Oh, okay. So they know they know they're working for vampires. Yeah, the Sabat like everyone to know just who they're dealing with. See, now that's kind of refreshing, actually. <laughs> I hate all this deceitful stuff. Uh, can you get me in there without being detected? Yes, I can. Cool. Just tell me when you're ready. Oh, it's, I'm ready. Let's go. Wait. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was born ready. Let's do this thing. Let's get to the warehouse. Now, I have some options on how I want to tackle this. I can try to be quiet and stealthy. Or I can just, you know, be like, uh, I'm Lucy and Blackwell. And I have presence and fortitude and blood heal. And I'm just going to thump you over the head. I'm going to punch you in your ear. And make your ear bleed and you're going to like not appreciate that at all. Um, I think I'm going to go that approach because that sounds way freaking cool. Except for, for this guy, I'm going to sneak up on this guy because I'm missing one blood point. Yum, yum, yum. Ooh, and I get a gun too. Oh wait, why did I stop feeding? Oh no. There. I just punched him in the back. It wasn't the ear, but it was at least his back. I hope nobody heard that. You know, I should totally, like, revamp this mission. And just put, like, thousands of guys in here. <laughs> wouldn't, that, wouldn't everybody be surprised when they download 1.6? <laughs> There's, like, 20 dudes in there, and they're all sporting the uh, the Steyr Aug. <laughs> that would be so mean. <laughs> I would get so many complaints on ModDB. I'd be like, ha, surprise. TFN's difficult, isn't it? Uh, let's see here. Okay, let's go this way. Because this is definitely the way to go. Okay, that guy's just hanging out. People so cannot even hurt me. I'm freaking Lucy and Blackwell, man. I'm unkillable. Lucy and the unkillable. Okay, this time I'm not going to stop feeding. I'm so used to breaking it off. As soon as I have the blood that I need, I just... I break off the feeding out of habit. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to run over here because there's something over here. I don't know what it is. I forget. I just remember that there was something. Oh, oh man. Freaking shotgun. You know, guns are for wusses, dude. Guns are so for wusses. Knives are for wusses. Any kind of weapon other than your fists. Lucy and Blackwell feels are for wusses. Now, I'm not going to feed on this guy because... His life is hard enough, you know? Actually, no, I think he disappears, so I might want to feed on him. Because I'm missing a blood point. But I'm not going to kill him, though. It's so like I said, his 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 life is difficult. No need to... No need to hassle the weaklings. What is my illusion? Okay, it's four. Oh, I've got nine experience. So I'm actually three points away from presence level three. Which, by the way, Presence Level 3 is like the most OP broken. What's so different about tonight? I don't know. Well, Presence itself is broken, but... Maybe all right. Something. Ready to do this? Like, I don't know, but keep your fucking eyes open. Go. And ah! Come here. Come here, big boy. Ah! Okay, so everyone kind of knows I'm here. <laughs> so, so much for sneaking. Dude. Dude. Guns are for wusses. Ah! Come here. Running away from people is for wusses too. Oh, I might want to fill up. Ugh! Ugh! Yeah. Nice. Oh, that didn't even hurt, dude. You're gonna need like a freaking grenade to take me out. Ugh! I love that 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 ending move. That freaking like drop where I jump across the screen and do some Jackie Chan on their face. That's so great. Actually, I think it's me kicking them in the back of the head, but, you know, it's all good. Okay. So, okay, so this is Mortimer and Sons. You know what? There, There's a guy. There's a guy over here. Let's take him out first. Yeah, him. I don't know if you guys can see him on YouTube. The compression is just terrible on YouTube. So it makes my beautiful videos look terrible as well. I'm going to try to... Oh! 
I'm still gonna feed on you, dude. Ow. Or maybe not. There we go. See, that's the thing about Brawl, man, is that you can totally just just take people down by feeding on them. They, 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 they have a hard time resisting your awesomeness, which is great. Okay, now, Lucian Blackwell goes in face first every time. And let's go ahead. Let's see here. Yeah, dude, I can totally do this. Okay, I'm gonna pop. I'm gonna pop two presents here. Okay, let's do it. Ah, you guys so can't even hurt me. Look at that guy bowing down to me, bowing, bowing down to my awesomeness. Ouch! Oh my gosh, I might die. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> I so gotta run, man. Okay, just, just hang, just hang. No, no, no! They're everywhere. They're gonna kill me. <laughs> oh my gosh! I'm getting swarmed by a mob of liberals. <laughs> Help! It's Antifa. Run! <laughs> oh my gosh! They're everywhere. Ah! Hopefully some of them will shoot their friends. Come on, shoot your friends. You guys totally want to shoot your friends. Ah! No. I'm Lucy and Blackwell. I bow to no <laughs> Look at me just like punching everyone. I gotta go, run! <laughs> this is not the way you want to play the Final Nights, by the way. Just so you guys know, this is not the way to go about it. <laughs> oh my gosh, I've taken so many freaking bullets to the face, dude. <laughs> oh crap! No! Oh my gosh! Ugh, ugh. Come on! Yes! Why am I only doing like zero damage to this guy? Oh my gosh, I'm like a wild animal. It's like a wild animal wearing your skin. See, that's the thing with guns, you gotta reload, but not Lucy and Blackwell, dude. He doesn't reload. Lucy and Blackwell just unloads. <laughs> I love it, man. I, I, I never play a melee character, so this is a lot of fun for me. No! Oh my gosh, I'm so dead. I'm so dead. Please don't shoot me through the gate. Okay, just hang. Just hang. We're cool. Everyone's cool. This guy's gonna be this guy's gonna be tough. He's gonna try to sneak up and get me. Come on. Get it. I wish I had celerity. Ah Oh cool. Shoot your own guy. Yes. That is how you clear him out, man. You just stand behind them and let their friends shoot them. All right, so <laughs> Lucy and Blackwell, uh, twenty bad guys, none. <laughs> I have full blood and full health. <laughs> Lucy and Blackwell just destroyed everybody. <laughs> Let's go bullet hunting. I don't know why though. I don't use guns. Oh, I got a knife though. That's worth like six dollars. Okay. Oh, that was easy enough. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, so that was like a really super duper stupid way to get through that. Um, as a developer, I wanted to show you guys the way not to do it. <laughs> so that was the way. That's how you not do it. Um, let's see here. Let's move this box. Nothing's too heavy for Lucy and Blackwell. That's right, baby. Is there a guy here? Yeah, look at him bowing down to me. Everyone's going to bow eventually. That's right. All Jackie Chan. 
Yeah. <laughs> what was that? What was that? What was that? I pity the fool. I pity the fool. What was that? Look at him bowing down to me too. I'm not even gonna punch you. I'm just gonna nom 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 on you. See now, as I'm feeding, I can just keep on hitting presents over and over and over, and just completely load up on presents. So it's basically on for the rest of the game or for the rest of the mission. Oh, oh, I just hit him with it. So every time I go and I hit him with my presence, it does a check to see if, uh... there we go. Oh, his friends don't even see it. You guys are blind, man. I'm eating your dude. I'm eating your dude. Come here. 27 damage. That dude got jacked by the bullets, man. So fists are the fastest weapon in the game. Which is great news for Lucy and Blackwell. Man, this guy's pretty tough, man. There we go. Where are you? Come here. Come here, big boy. I got a little something for you. How dare you resist my f feeding attempts? Come here. Yeah. Yeah. Yum, 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 yum. That's right. So, when I'm feeding, when I'm full of blood, I definitely don't waste that blood. I immediately load up on presents. I cannot wait for the Fang of Vukudlak. That's going to be so awesome. Ah! Come here. Come here, you. Come here, you. Yeah, give daddy some sugar. <laughs> give your daddy some sugar. You can call me Mr. Blackwell. Oh my gosh, this mission has been freaking hilarious. Sneak around, yeah. Sneaking is so for wusses. Come here. Look at that dude with the shotgun, he's just standing there. He like doesn't even, doesn't care. Man, he shot me in the freaking jaw, did you guys see that? Ah, he shot me like in the freaking jaw and I so got hurt. Alright, I need some serious blood heal. Because that, that freaking shotgun was like right in my face. I've got to have like three hours worth of presence on my timer. Because I have not been wasting it at all. All right, let's plant this big boy. Okay, so uh, a uh, Toreador anti-tribute with a shotgun who's more powerful than I am is going to come flying through the door here in a minute. I put him in the game. I don't know why. Just thought it'd be a good idea. Come here. Ah! And he has presence too. Wonderful. Wonderful. Come here, you. So he's using his presence and I'm using my presence. That's why the screen is shaking right now. Ow. Ow. Get over here. You're annoying, man. No. This dude's fast. Like he's really fast running around backwards. He shouldn't be that fast. Ha! He tried to get into the other room, but no. Lucian would not let him. I'm very I'm like doing no freaking damage to this guy. I gotta go. I gotta figure out another way. Okay, so my fists are not gonna hurt a vampire. I either need Yeah, let's do a knife. It's not my preferred weapon, but 
There we go. That's a lot better. There we go. Hopefully I can stun lock him. Like what I'm doing right now, I'm stun locking him. Nice. It basically makes it so they can't fight back. That's the thing I love about the knife. Is that you can just keep on doing that backup move. Over and over and over again. And every time they try to get up. I don't know why I'm taking bullets. I don't need them. I wouldn't mind some blood though. So I increase the timer. Notice it's like three hours. <laughs> you, you get like three hours to leave now. Which is super great. I think we already killed these guys. The reason I did that is because the Toreador anti tribute and the Gangrel anti tribute. What is it? Difficulty of six. Yeah, that you have to fight. And if you're doing it with fists, that would have taken like forever. There should be a guy upstairs here. Nope, he's gone too. Everybody's gone. And he was supposed to be my blood source. All right, so I got to go up against this Gangrel with uh, Fortitude, which is super duper not fun. Ah! I'm not going to be able to get through this dude's Fortitude without a knife. Oh, I hate using a knife, but... Ow! Oh, I forgot, dude. He's got freaking claws. This is... This is going to not be fun. All right. Oh man, he can dash forward. Please don't die to this guy. I just killed everybody in the game, but yet I died to this one last dude. He is tough though. Whoa. Man, aggravated damage takes forever to heal. Dude can dash, man. He's like a he's a party animal. I gotta I gotta stay away from his his dashing. See how he comes forward like that? He just wow. You can tell by his aura that he has a very, very high uh, fortitude level because he's practically glowing green. Which tells me uh because the auras get stronger the more you have of that particular... Um... Oh, man, dude, my blood's almost gone. This guy's going to... Let me pop this blood bag. Ah, so you're going to see as I level up in presence, um, you're going to notice that my yellow aura or my orange aura is keeps getting stronger. Got to heal. No, oh, stay away from me. Oh, that was nice. I did six and six. I almost got him. One more. There we go. Woo! Man, that scared me. I'm like seriously running out of time. I have no blood in this Gangrel with his stupid fortitude is making it like impossible. Anything in here? Not that I can see. Uh, so if I had a higher inspection, there's all sorts of stuff laying all over the place in here, but uh, I do not have inspection. I want to put my fist back on just because I hate, I hate carrying a knife because then people are going to think that I'm a... Uh, a melee character, and I'm not. I'm a brawl because brawl's the way to go. Because brawl's amazing. There we go. There you go. Two more experience. So I reskinned Beckett. So now he is a brown wolf with red eyes instead of a really stupid-looking blue and white ghostly wolf. I always thought that looked terrible. Actually, Wesp ended up using that reskin in the unofficial patches. Haha, <laughs> what an honor. Uh, the warehouse, your handiwork, I presume. Yeah, that was me.
Hopefully, no Sabbat soul <laughs> escape. They can be somewhat antagonistic. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, let's see here. Right here, uh, who are you? Why have you been following me? I see my reputation for once does not precede me. No. Nope. Tell me, have you by chance seen or? Uh, I haven't really seen anything strange Most at all. Of my contacts ever. here report sensing something unusual in the night air. Well, they're Pleasure wrong. Meeting your acquaintance, <laughs> but there are rumblings for me to discredit. Absolutely. All right. See you, Becca. This video is already too long, so <laughs> I have to kind of cut that dialogue short. Oh, I just lost the humanity because I'm below. Wonderful. So now you guys get to see my uh, clan flaw taking place. My humanity is now four instead of five. Awesome. And I have 11 experience. I need one more and I can get presence three, which is basically going to allow me to own everybody. And we are on our way to Los Angeles after this. So, uh, awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed episode eight. I had a lot of fun putting it together. I hope you guys enjoyed my uh, little videos of the uh, vampire clips. Um, I did that so that you guys have something fun to watch while I ramble. Because um, sometimes, you know, a rambling zero morph is never a good thing. And, uh, you know, I gotta got to do something to keep you guys entertained while I'm rambling. So uh, I hope to do that in the future. If YouTube does not block my video because of these uh, movie clips, uh, then I can continue to keep doing it. So uh, we'll see. We'll see when I upload this to YouTube, if they, if they flag it and bring it down and all that, and then I'll know I can't do that. Uh, but if they don't, then we're going to have some really cool movie clips in the future as well during my announcement. So, um, all right, guys, in case you uh, are not following JT Corpse and Something Compass's playthrough, watch those. They're amazing. Um, and uh, leave a comment if you guys like the new Malcolm uh, Blood Timer, the blood counter handling thing. If you guys agree with it, awesome. If you don't like it... Um, just 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 file a complaint at mod db and somebody will get back to you uh <laughs> at a later time <laughs> the uh, tfn press secretary will uh reach out to you at a later time i just wouldn't hold your breath because you'd probably suffocate <laughs> all right guys i hope you had a good time i sure did zero more out